Welcome, everyone. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedules to be with us this evening. <clears throat> Pardon me, we have an interesting topic in front of us, emergency preparedness, and we've got a very, very distinguished panel that has joined us uh, tonight at the end of a long day, uh, but they've got some tremendous information. Uh, I believe we're going live on Facebook, and I want to thank Susan Kennedy and Kevin Fogg and my staff for helping organize this, as well as uh, DCO, our folks at the Capitol that are actually orchestrating uh, the technology here and able to uh, send us live out to the internet. So, and thank you uh, to those of you who are tuning in to learn a little bit more about how to be better prepared uh, in your homes here in the county. So I'm your host for the evening. I'm Assembly Member Kevin Mullen, very proud to represent San Mateo County in the California State Assembly. It's Assembly District 22, which runs from South San Francisco and Brisbane in the north down to Redwood City in the south, over to our beautiful San Mateo County coastline. It's my eighth year now in the California State Assembly, and it's been a, a real honor to represent uh, this county and serve as the Speaker Pro Tem of the California State Assembly. So as you know, we live in an area where disaster can strike at any time without much advance warning. We live along multiple fault lines, so it's not a matter of if, the next big one will hit, but when? And it's not just earthquakes we need to prepare for, but as we've seen this year and in the last few years, we need to be prepared for wildfires as well. I was talking with our panel uh, in advance of the uh, program here that I'm a San Mateo County lifer and I remember when San Mateo County was not wildfire country, but we are now officially designated uh, that way. And I serve on uh, budget subcommittee three for resources and transportation and we fund uh, the Cal Fire activities and we just have seen uh, how much work needs to be done across the state of California to better prepare uh, this state for wildfire season which uh, used to be limited to the uh, end of summer and the fall but now seems to be a year round endeavor so many many challenges confront the state of California but also uh, San Mateo County so I decided to host this event to discuss emergency preparedness and encourage everyone to be proactive in our participation and preparation. I hope we get people thinking about how to keep their families safe, what their individual emergency preparedness plan is. Do they have a disaster kit with enough food and supplies? Um, how are they going to incorporate their family pets into their preparedness plan? And finally, uh, navigating the insurance claims process should uh, disaster strike. These are all important considerations as we prepare for any emergency. If you have a question as you're listening to our panelists, uh, you can type it into the comment box and we'll do our best to address as many questions as possible within our time frame. And with that brief int introduction, I would now like to bring in our uh, panelists with us. We are fortunate to have Dina Gunning. She is the Community Risk and Resiliency Specialist with the Central County Fire Department here in San Mateo County. Uh, my old buddy, Kevin Rose uh, with the Office of Emergency Services. He's a supervisor uh, with San Mateo County uh, OES. We have Buffy Martin Tarbox. She is the Communications Manager with the Peninsula Humane Society and SPCA. And fortunate as well to have Peter Meza, Associate Insurance Compliance Officer with the Department of Insurance. So thank you all for uh, being here with us today to share your individual expertise. Our panelists will talk about preparing for emergencies, staying up to date with the alert system that we have here uh, in the county that can alert you to uh, evolving events. Uh, we're gonna talk about the CERT program and how you can get actively involved to help your community uh, and much, much more. So uh, to kick us off uh, with the presentation, let me turn it over to Dina Gunning. Dina, great to see you and thank you for being here tonight. I'll turn it over to you. Thanks so much, Assemblymember Mullen. It is a pleasure. We are so happy that you're hosting this this evening and allowing us to share um, with everybody in our communities the importance of preparedness. And we're going to go through some just basic steps. Um, 
it doesn't take a whole lot. Um, we know that just knowledge is power. And so we're here to share information. And then we hope that you will take that information and share that with others. Um, so I will go ahead and start off and share my screen. And let's see, we should be good. So this evening, I just wanted to share a disaster ready pre um, presentation. And again, thank assembly member Mullen for hosting this evening and realizing the importance of this and also a San Mateo County lifer as well. So I've been here all my life and uh, just the experiences that we've had in the last oh, decade, uh, if you would, um, has changed dramatically. And we all realize the importance and we all need to um, be prepared and take those simple steps um, in order to do that. Um, I do have a brief video. I'm gonna give this a shot and see if this um, plays here. So let me try. Okay, are you seeing that? Let's see, just let me do a check in here. Let's see here. Let's see. Just a moment. So, are you saying the five essential steps slide? There we go. Okay. Okay, so that was a brief video from our Listos California for All campaign. And so, so we've Dina, developed- If I could just uh, interrupt you, I'm not hearing you, Dina. Uh, we were able to read the captions on the video. Uh, so we were able to get a sense of the content of the video, but I just wanna make sure that uh, we're able to hear you, Dina, for your discussion. Okay. Mm.
Let's see. Are you able to hear me now? So Dina, I'm not sure if you have to unmute, but we can't hear you. So I'm not sure if we're able to fix that issue. Okay. Let's see. Apologies. Are you able to hear me now? Dina, you are fine. You were coming through fine on the live stream. You should be fine. Okay. So you have me now? Yes. Oh, perfect. Thank you. So let me step back for a second to the former slide. Okay. So we want everybody to be able to take simple steps to get prepared and the five simple steps, uh, the first one is to get alerts and know what to do. Uh, the second step is make a plan to protect yourself and your neighbors and your loved ones. And third step is pack a go bag with things you need. And the fourth step is build a stay box for when you can't leave. And fifth is help friends and neighbors get ready. So in this first one, make a plan, creating a contact list. So making sure that you know who you want to know is okay and who, do, who wants to know that you're okay. So having that contact list and making sure that you're having somebody from outside of the area. So connect and protect and all of this information will be available on the Listos California website in their disaster ready guide. So we'll have that information at the end of the presentation. So in making your plan, we'd like you to practice evacuations. And so mapping out how you get in and out of your neighborhood. Um, where are the safe places? And coming soon in San Mateo County, uh, we have the Zone Haven Evacuation Program. So stay tuned for more information. And we look forward to sharing that with you um, sometime in mid-November. Um, and when we do launch, um, we always want to make sure that you listen to the local authorities and information that we put out. There we go. Uh, packing a go bag. So getting all of the things together that you would need. So if you just think about what you would need in case you had to evacuate and could you not go with something with, for a day, uh, a week, your medications, things like that, um, identification cards, insurance documents. I know we're gonna be talking about that a little bit later in the program, your medications list, uh, family photos, just things that are important to you and including your children and your pets. Um, everybody needs their own go bag. So build a stay box. So prepare for at least three days. Um, so water, food, trash bags, things that you want that you would need to stay at home. And I think we're all aware of what those needs are these days with what's going on. Help friends and neighbors. So you can establish a neighborhood network. Um, this is actually a photo of the virtual disaster survival drill that our Burlingame Neighborhood Network did here in October. Uh, so they did it via Zoom, uh, just like we're doing now. So there's lots of different options and ways that you can still prepare, uh, even though we are staying distant. And then next steps, get involved. Uh, you are still able to take CERT training now that CERT is available online. So we're really excited um, to be able to offer CERT online now and you can pre-register with your sponsoring agency. So 
Um, you can look that up in San Mateo County um, in your particular town or city uh, to see who your sponsoring agency is for your CERT program. Uh, and so a lot of us are now doing that since we cannot be in person. And you need to pre-register uh, with your sponsoring agency. Um, so for Central County Fire Department, you can go to the CCFD website and register, and then we'll provide you the information for doing the online training. Once you've completed the online training, then when we're able to, uh, we will schedule our hands-on skills and exercise course so that you can graduate the program. So these are just some photos. And this was the last session that we did um, in August of last year. Uh, so we can't wait to see everybody in person again and be able to train uh, in person and learn those important skills like fire suppression, search and rescue, disaster first aid, communications. Um, and you can see um, it's really a fun, engaging class. And we look forward to, again, being in person in the near future. So you are the change. Um, we want you to share information and um, you know, sign up for those alerts. Um, and I know Kevin uh, Rose is going to talk a little bit more about the alerting system. Then uh, we have several different ways that you can register for alerts um, in San Mateo County. It's SMC alert. Um, there's also the Bay Area alerts, which is Bay alerts that we just launched um, so that if you want to look for surrounding counties um, and also there's Cal alerts, um, any alerts for the state. So it's really important to register and subscribe to these alerts. Um, this is how we're going to notify you. So if you don't subscribe, then we can't alert you. And we want people to be able to get those alerts and get that timely information when it's needed. And we're really excited to be part of the Listos California, California for All campaign. Uh, Governor Newsom realized the importance of our CERT teams and being prepared. And so this LISTOS presentation um, this evening is part of that campaign. Uh, and it's a wonderful uh, way for us to do outreach and engagement um, during these COVID times where we can't be in person. These are just some resources um, and uh, Assemblyman Mullen will put these on his website. So we've supplied these um, and these are just links to more information uh, for getting prepared. So this is just a brief uh, um, segment for getting prepared, five easy steps. Um, but we also wanna remind you that this weekend um, is our fallback time. So we have to turn the clocks back and it's a great time to remember to check your smoke detectors, check your carbon monoxide detectors and look at your emergency supplies and refresh them. Um, practice your escape drills with your family um, and just remind everybody how important it is to update your plan and practice it. So, and I don't know if we have any questions or we'd like to keep the questions till the end. Dean, I think we're gonna save some of the questions for the end, but thank you Perfect. so much for the presentation and apologies uh, to interrupt you at the beginning of your presentation. I couldn't hear you, but apparently everybody else could. Uh, and that's the important part. So uh, <laughs> thank you so much, uh, Dina, for the presentation. And now I'm going to transition over to Kevin Rose, Kevin with San Mateo County OES uh, for his brief presentation. Kevin. Great. Thank you, Assemblyman Mullen. And uh, thank you to yourself and your staff for holding uh, tonight's event. And uh, thank you all, uh, home audience, for, for being here as well. Uh, my name is Kevin Rose. I'm with the San Mateo County Office of Emergency Services. Uh, we are the emergency unit within the county that uh, handles all disaster preparedness planning, response, recovery, and mitigation. Actually, tonight I am coming to you from our emergency operations center that has been activated since March with regards to the pandemic, the COVID pandemic, as well as as we have moved from the CZU response to the CZU fire recovery. And tonight I also want to um, thank Dina Gunning, my uh, city emergency manager, partner in crime, uh, who will be helping me out with the slides. Um, so next slide, please. 
So tonight what I'll be talking to you about are uh, the Zone Haven project that uh, Dina had alluded to, and then also alert and warning as well. Uh, Zone Haven itself is a real-time evacuation platform on the internet uh, for San Mateo County first responders and in the coming uh, weeks or months uh, in the uh, public, for the public as well. It is a work in progress that has already been used for the CZU fire, the Sign Hill fire at South San Francisco uh, just the other week in, San, in South San Francisco, and also for other counties and other fires throughout the state. Uh, the next slides, please. So what it does is the map itself basically breaks down San Mateo County into uh, parcels, 300 plus uh, zones. You can also think of them like precincts if you've done precinct walking. And within those uh, zones, they, they have information basically that includes, as you see there, population, nighttime as well as daytime, number of vehicles, uh, buildings, and they even get down into critical facilities, so buildings like hospitals or fire departments or police stations, and the acreage. And the important aspect of this is you can click, click on the zones that you need to activate for some purpose, and cumulatively it will add up all the numbers to help you out in essence of um, what its use is for. For fire in the field, basically what it does is when a fire does occur and a threatened areas are starting to be identified and uh, areas that uh, most likely will be needing evacuation, fire can utilize Zone Haven to sync up and, and uh, uh, highlight the zones. And even during CZU, there was a public facing component of it. So you could see the zones that were utilized both in San Mateo County and Santa, Clara, Santa Cruz County. And then for law, law enforcement is responsible for the evacuation order. The one basically to make sure that all the residents get out of there. And soon to come, what we'll be doing is creating a seamless transition to the SMC alert system, the county's system to notify its residents of what's going on. And the coming soon component, of course, is more added aspects to this. Right now, the information has been loaded. First responders are being trained. There'll be an implementation aspect and the public facing side will have a lot more uh, to come. Uh, so the next slide, please. So this is essentially what fire deals with today. And these are the actual fire maps that were utilized by fire within the field for the CZU fire. Basically what they have to do is the maps that they have, as you can see, they've got topography maps. They've uh, laid out basically uh, similar to if you go hiking, uh, they also have other layer topography maps in the bottom that sort of indicates like valleys uh, in, in the foothill area. And then the upper right is the closest they come basically towards markers that include roads and areas of identification. So normally what fire has to do when they uh, realize areas that need to be evacuated is with these three maps, basically figure out what are the neighborhoods to be notified and then work with uh, OES, all those cities, and special districts like FIRE have the capability to utilize SMC alert as well uh, to notify the people that are impacted right away. Uh, but with Zone Haven, the next slide, this is the progression. This is the CZU FIRE, the line that's separating the red from the purple. The purple is San Mateo County. The red is for um, Santa Cruz County. And that number is legitimate. Essentially, those zones that were activated it was roughly about 6,600 individuals that needed to be evacuated uh, from uh, the fire pathway as it, made, as it progressed south through Santa Cruz County. Immediately the fire was began that Saturday into Sunday um, evening on August 16th. August 18th, that Tuesday, is when it took a turn for the worse. It was three fires that basically started to uh, combine together and move rapidly south into uh, San Mateo County communities. And so Tuesday's immediate evacuation orders were given uh, right away with OES and the EOC working directly with the field and CAL FIRE and with uh, Zone Haven to highlight those zones, notify at that point it was about 4,000 people uh, for the immediate evacuation. And then um, the following day, that Wednesday, warnings, evacuation warnings went out to other areas as well. And they would be co uh, color coded uh, to indicate red being the evacuation, yellow being the warning, green being that uh, they're okay for now. And then sure enough, that following uh, day, Thursday, those warnings were then turned into evacuation orders as well. So the people were packed up, knew that they were on the hook, and then once it happened, it occurred. 
It's faster mapping, it's faster coordination, faster planning, faster decision making, and faster notification to help everyone out. And this is still a work in progress, like I mentioned, but we are very fortunate that CAL FIRE uh, was, was a strong proponent of this with San Mateo County to utilize it in real time fashion. Next slide, please. So now I'm going to talk to you about alert and warning. And I'll actually start more so from the national picture and then kind of narrow it down to our, to our hometown, to our focus um, here. So the map here, a little hard to understand, the most important part is the middle section. Um, at the national level, there's actually a standardized emergency alert and warning system, the Integrated Public Alert and Warning System, or IPAWS. In emergency management, we love our abbreviations, so they'll be coming to you, but I will spell them all out through this presentation. So there is, um, if you could please go to the next slide. There's what's called the emergency alert system. This is the one on your TV and radio that interrupts daytime television with the annoying sound. This is the test of the emergency broadcasting system. This is the emergency alert system that um, the media has to help um, escalate and elevate and amplify whatever disasters might be forthcoming or already taking place. There's the wireless emergency alert. San Mateo County, we have that capability in the Office of Emergency Services to utilize this. This is what on your phone looks very similar to an Amber Alert. And this was what we had sent out with permission from FEMA to the impacted residents in the CZU fire. So it hits a geographical area as well as SMC alert subscriberships in that geographical area, as well as what we have is reverse 911. So pinging all the folks there to try to reach them. And not everyone is reached by this, by the WIA, by the reverse 911 or SMC alert, but that's another system available to us. Uh, another one that we have uh, with our partners, our federal partners, is the NOAA Weather Alert. Again, abbreviations, the National Oceanic Administ uh, Atmospheric Administration, um, National Weather Service. And basically, these are radios separate um, that you have to purchase. They, they run um, on the uh, economic side of 20 to $30 or whatnot. But these are notifications that National Weather Service sends to people in uh, zones or areas to live in the middle of um, pending weather. Of the next slide. And lastly, something that not all counties nationwide have, but what we're very fortunate in San Mateo County, a lot of the Bay Areas, our own public alert and warning system, SMC alert, and please write this down, take a picture of it. I hope you are a subscriber already, www.smcalert.info. Share this with your family and friends if you haven't already signed up. Um, but please do sign up, check with your neighbors, check with your friends, um, and maybe even tonight, a first action step for you. If you could do that, within the next couple of weeks, we can actually monitor subscribership and see if the are you prepared people, our people tonight, actually help us get a little bit of a bump within subscribership. Uh, next slide, please. So SMC Alert is a free, opt-in alert notification system used to immediately notify you of urgent and or emergency situations. Uh, it's used by the county, by the cities and special districts like fire districts um, to indicate fire uh, activities or law activities in certain areas. Uh, the messages can be sent via phone and voice, text, an email. It's customizable. You can choose if there's certain cities that you want to know more about of uh, anything that might be happening. Uh, but if it is like the major one, you all, all subscribers will be notified. And then right now we actually have 139,000 people signed up. That's about 18 to 18 and a half percent of our population. It's actually a very high number for opt-in that we're proud of, but we need to keep increasing that to uh, make sure that we cover as much people as possible. Uh, the next slide, please. And then the other piece that we also want to do is the alerting systems themselves. We look towards the county and the cities with their own social media features that uh, you, you subscribe to, that you follow. A um, lot of people's social media is where they get their news. Alert and warning, that's vetted information that goes out and it's transferred and shared with you on Facebook, on Twitter, Nextdoor is extremely popular. 
Instagram. Uh, YouTube is more for preparedness and planning, but it also is a, a medium that we have available to help us to get those messages out. So once we launch those alerts, the county, the PIO, or um, the Joint Information Center helps on social media send out the message and the information so people can kind of start spreading it as round. Uh, the next slide, please. And when it's really critical, and we know that we never reach everyone through all the notifications that I've already, already mentioned, as vast and as many as there are, and all the different platforms and features that we try to use, this is also what we utilize that was utilized for the CZU fire. First responders going to neighborhoods with PA systems, running their sirens, even going door to door knocking to get people uh, to evacuate. Radio, the best channels to tune into are KGO and KCBS. They are our partners basically to provide information even throughout the Bay Area, including San Mateo County. Amateur radio, I'm sure a lot of, there's a few amateur radio folks out there uh, that are familiar with the ham radio that in turn, we have our Sheriff's Communications Unit in the Emergency Operations Center that utilizes ham radio to get the word out to other volunteer groups, including um, the community emergency response team, CERT teams that have uh, ham radio operators to help spread the message. FRS is kind of more like the walkie talkies back and forth. These are volunteer groups that are going out into the field uh, for other communication. And then the neighborhood groups to help um, with the door to door knocking, CERT, neighborhood watch, even block captains that are set up. And what we have one more very important player in all of this. If you could go to the next slide, please. You, that's right. In every disaster, you are the first first responder. And when disaster strikes, make sure you and your family are ready. If time permits, notify your neighbor, your neighbors, your street, get them to help you and get them to sign up for SMC Alert. I was really happy to see within Dina's presentation as far as the five steps to get you ready. Get those alerts and make sure that you have your uh, neighbors uh, working with them to help out as well. And please sign up for SMC Alert and also know that with your help, um, not only about signing this up or sharing about these opportunities that are made available, but to work within your community. Um, we're never going to reach everyone, but you will bring us that much closer and able to do so. And our unified success will continue to grow. So I thank you all. Great information, Kevin. Thank you very much for that. And we have questions at the end, but just very quickly, Kevin, while, while you have the floor, if you have a, a mass power outage, you know, we've been dealing with the PSPS events for example, uh, or if you had an, uh, an emergency where cell towers were damaged, um, you know, basically all of the electronic communications are hampered. Uh, what do we do in that kind of a situation? What is like plan C, D, and E uh, uh, to get vital information when you have some kind of a mass event like that? So at that level, we go to people. It's first responders, fire, law, volunteers, if it's safe. They immediately go out through the community that's impacted um, to, to communicate with them and basically to make sure that they're safe and they're okay. Um, I have heard actually with regards to ham radio, it has withstood the test of time going back to the world wars in every disaster and event. It is foolproof. And so that's another way that we're able to get that information going. And then person to person, the area is just outside the impact uh, zones of where you may have lost your uh, voice, internet. Um, there's always still good old radio. And for those that are lucky that's, that have the POTS, the plain old telephone system. Excellent. Great, Kevin, thank you. I'm sure there'll be a few more questions uh, before we wrap later. Um, as a pet owner myself, I'm excited to introduce our next speaker, Buffy Martin Tarbox with the Peninsula Humane Society and SPCA to talk about uh, pet safety and if there has to be an evacuation or uh, if you have livestock uh, out on our coast, uh, what are some options for you in an evacuation event? So Buffy, let me turn it over to you and thank you so much for being with us. Oh, thank you so much for having us. We're really excited to present this information and be a part of the emergency disaster plan for the entire county. So I do have a very short slide presentation to share. Can everyone see that okay?
So Buffy, I am not seeing the slide presentation. Sorry about there that. We go. How's, there you there go. we go. I'm sorry. Looks great. Thank you. Since we're all having computer issues today. So as Mr. Rose said, you are your first responder. You're the first responder for yourself and for your family. And remember, your family includes your beloved pets. So what we want to do is share some information with pet owners across our county and really even across the Bay Area to let them know that creating a to-go bag, a to-go kit for your animal is just as important as creating one for yourself. So some of the most important things to do is to be prepared for your animal. As we know, we live in earthquake zones, fire zones, tsunami zones, all kinds of different types of situations that not only impact us as humans, but directly impact our animals. So one of the most important things that you can do for your animal is make sure that your pet ID is current. And unfortunately, sometimes, you know, that people may think, especially like a dog or a cat, that if they have a collar and they have an ID on that collar, that that's going to really protect your pet if you get separated from your animal. However, your animal can easily lose that collar, that tag can fall off, so the best possible form of identification is a implanted microchip. And it's literally implanted between the shoulder blades on your pet. And it's a permanent form of identification. You register it online to your name. So if you become separated from your animal, this isn't just in the case of an emergency, but if your animal gets lost, the animal can wind up at our shelter or a different shelter or vet clinic. That person can scan it and they can automatically see who that animal belongs to and they can contact you. This is critical in an event of an emergency because animals get scared and they run and you may not have time to go looking for your animals if they've gotten outside or if they fled outside of the yard. So if animal rescue and control or if a member of the public picks up your animal and that chip is scanned, then you can. it's an easier way to be reunited with your animal. So another important thing is establish two trusted friends outside of the area that could be potentially impacted from a disaster. Because if you have to flee your home for whatever reason, you're going to need a place to keep your animal. And so this would be like a trusted family member or a trusted friend that you can house your animal with for up to a week or sometimes even um, more. We definitely saw this situation in the event of the most recent fires in August and unfortunately because of the pandemic, we couldn't have the mass sheltering that we normally see in these kind of cases that are usually run by Red Cross and by the county. So people were having to find pet friendly hotels or having to find homes where they could actually stay that would allow their animals with them. So it's best to make sure that you have two trusted friends that you can keep your animals with. Secure your home inside and out. Like we said, animals, especially dogs get scared in any kind of a disaster situation. And this way, you know that there's any loose fence boards or if dogs like to dig underneath, that you know that you can keep your animal contained within an area. So if you have to flee, you can quickly grab your animal. Familiarize your pet with the carrier or a crate. I'm a cat owner myself and my cat hates the carrier. Anytime she sees it come out, she goes right underneath the bed. So it's a struggle for many owners to get your animal familiar with the crate. So in the case of an emergency, you can literally just grab your animal, throw it in a crate, and you can leave immediately for your own safety and for your animal's safety. So have a disaster prep kit. And I do have a slide that shows you some of the things that you should include. It's very similar to what you would have for your human family members. And then also keep a pet friendly hotel list. We know how critical this is because if you have to flee your home, you may not have a place to stay with your animal. And so it's good to always have a pet friendly hotel list that you can check into. If you are not able to find pet friendly housing, you can house your animal with the Peninsula Humane Society at our San Mateo shelter. This is for San Mateo County residents. And we can house that animal for up to 30 days completely free of charge. Many people did utilize that during the most recent um, fire. We actually did end up housing 98 smaller animals at our Coyote Point shelter in San Mateo, and then we assisted with literally hundreds and hundreds of livestock and barnyard animals that were housed at the Cow Palace that were fleeing from the, from the fires in August. So pet supply lists. 
you'll see this looks very similar to you know what was shared recently with Miss Gunning to show like what you're going to include in your to-go bag into your to-go kit. Only this is specific for your animal. So you want to make sure that you have a pet first aid kit, maybe a pet first aid book, tweezers, gauze, bandages, pads, scissors, hydrogen peroxide, antibiotic ointment, cotton swab, and then of course the critical things for your pet's safety. Of course the carrier, a week supply of pet food, water, bottled water if you can, or anything like that, bowls for food and water, plastic bags for waste, disinfectants, make sure you have your leash, a can opener if you need a can opener, because if you're in a situation and you can't open your can, that can be a problem if your animal only eats um, canned food. Any medications that your pets may have, blanket, uh, bedding, towels, your pet's favorite treats, that's to entice them when you're scared or stressed, newspaper, paper towels, and certainly litter for cats. Another very important thing is remember to vaccinate your pets. Make sure that your pets are always up to date on their vaccines. If they're not, it's, it's a great risk that they may not be able to go into a shelter system for temporary housing, or they may not be able to go into a hotel for um, any sort of situation for animals that are, or for people that are fleeing from a disaster type situation. And it's just healthier to make sure that your pets are vaccinated. Keep addresses and phone numbers of emergency clinics and again, pet friendly hotels. And should you ever become separated from your animal during an emergency situation, or even something as simple as your animal getting scared during the 4th of July fireworks and fleeing your yard, come visit our intake shelter in San Mateo County and see if we have your animal there or talk to your neighbors, talk to anybody to see if your animal is there. So that's all I have. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Buffy. Appreciate that very much. And I wanted to make note that we are recording this session and we are going to post this on my official assembly website. So in case uh, you weren't taking notes and you wanna go back and review either Dina's or Buffy's or any Kevin's and now Peter's presentations, uh, uh, that will be available shortly uh, on my website. And uh, it's got a long uh, web address, but very simply, if you enter my name, Kevin Mullen, uh, in Google, it's the first link that comes up. It's my official assembly website and all this information will be captured there. So with that, our final presenter is Peter Meza with the Department of Insurance. Peter, you've been uh, great uh, in association with my office. Uh, you presented at a senior scam stopper event and always have great information for us. So appreciate your time, sir. And uh, we're talking about uh, the claims process and how that works uh, in the unfortunate event of a disaster and uh, what are some uh, basic steps that you would need to take. So Peter, with that, let me turn it over to you. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> thank you so much, uh, Assemblymember Mullen. I, I just wanna thank on, uh, on behalf of uh, the Insurance Commissioner Ricardo Lara for this opportunity uh, to participate in this, this event. Thank you, your staff. Uh, they've worked uh, behind the scenes uh, making all the, the technical arrangements to make this event a success. So um, I work for Insurance uh, Commissioner Ricardo Lara, who leads the state's largest uh, consumer protection agency. And as a department, we are focused on ensuring consumers get a fair shake uh, from their insurance companies. Today, CDI is the largest consumer protection agency in the state with annual direct premiums of 320, I'm sorry, $310 billion. And California is the largest insurance market in the United States, also the fourth largest in the entire world. So we're nearly about 1,400 dedicated employees that work at CDI, and we oversee about 1,400 insurance companies, license about 425 agents, brokers, adjusters, entities. Um, in the normal uh, course of a business, uh, CDI processes about 8,000 rate applications a year, 215,000 licenses. Uh, we perform hundreds of financial reviews and examinations of insurers doing business in California. CDI annually receives over 170,000 consumer assistant calls. Uh, we investigate more than 30,000 consumer complaints. Uh, as a result, we recover more than 84 million a year for consumers. So CDI is always uh, processing even tens of thousands of referrals for against 
you know, uh, in individuals for fraud. We conduct in individual um, investigations, fraud investigations. And all of CDI's functions, including uh, overseeing insurers uh, solvency and licensing agent brokers and conducting market reviews, resolving complaints, um, investigating prosecu and prosecuting uh, insurance fraud, it's all to protect the consumer. CDI has been very active uh, in all the fires throughout the state, looking for ways to keep the insurance market uh, economically viable. And we feel that Cal California is a strong marketplace and will continue to, to be and remain so uh, for the for, for the CF. I'm sure it will continue to be very strong, uh, as strong as we are. We continue to stay active, looking for regional and statewide solutions uh, for the California consumers. Uh, just 10 days ago, um, uh, October 19th, uh, the insurance commissioner convened a very important in virtual investigatory hearing. And that was to initiate some regulatory uh, actions to protect residents from increasing risk of wildfires. Uh, we've had several years of deadly destruction or destructive fires. Uh, there's increase of climate change and so many things that are happening. Uh, we're concerned about the wildland urban interface in the state. So the commissioner uh, took some, is going to take some actions and aim to help stabilize the insurance market while also protecting lives and homes and reducing catastrophic wild losses and increasing uh, very important transparency for the individual consumers. Following this uh, hearing, uh, commissioner plans to uh, look at ways and actions that he can take uh, in many different areas. So the insurance commissioner's office uh, continues to look for ways to ensure that consumers uh, who are victims of disaster, like um, a wildfire, have enough insurance to replace their home. Um, being uninsured is, is, a, is a terrible thing to happen. And, you know, it would be terrible to be underinsured and then realize that at the time. So we look, work very closely with law enforcement, with the state contractors, license board, with the district attorneys uh, to prevent scam artists, uh, unlicensed contractors, public adjusters from taking advantage of the survivors. So the, today we're urging all the California residents to prepare their homes and assets uh, for the potential of damages that we all face in the midst of what has already been a very destructive year. Um, taking a few minutes to prepare and be ready uh, if and when a disaster strikes, it will save you time and headaches uh, when you need to file a claim. So at the Department of Insurance, uh, we have free home inventory guides and several other very helpful publications to help you uh, be ready uh, should a fire threaten your home. And I just want to encourage you to visit the Department of Insurance website. Our website is www insurance.ca.gov. Uh, we're there to help you, to assist you in dealing with your insurance company. Call our hotline. Uh, the number is easy to remember, 1-800-927-HELP, help, or 4357. And uh, we're uh, there to help you through the process. So thank you so much for uh, the invitation, um, Assembly Member. Thank you so much, Peter. Um, just a quick question while you're on the screen. Uh, is there a certain type of insurance that folks should carry in anticipation of a potential disaster? What are, what are the most common uh, uh, kinds of insurance or types of insurance uh, for appropriate levels of protection? Well, you have to understand that uh, the standard fire insurance policy is essentially covers um, uh, perils that are related mostly to fire. You know, uh, wind and storm is part of it, but you don't, so it, it'll cover the, that part of it, but it won't cover uh, earthquake insurance or flood insurance. So, um, you know, those are separate policies that you need to uh, acquire. You can talk to your insurance agent, the insurance agent can uh, go through it with you and, um, you know, and, and kind of help you through it. But you know, the, the fire insurance policy, you got to make sure you have all the, the standard, the dwelling part of it, um, the uh, personal property, uh, other, uh, other uh, structures. Um, you want to make sure you have a, a, um, the uh, loss of use, what they call it, uh, for, uh, you know, if you're out of your home for a period of time because of, you know, your reconstruction of the home. And then, of course, liability. These are the basic parts of, of a structure of a policy contract, fire policy contract. 
Gotcha. Thank you, Peter. And thank you to all of our panelists. I've got just a couple of quick questions, but for folks who are watching uh, on Facebook, you can post a question, but you can also post a question uh, in the comment box. Uh, we have just a couple of minutes left. We're coming up on the end of our program, but if you have a quick question and we can slide it in, uh, we'll do that. Um, I wanted to circle back uh, to Dina. Uh, and I, again, I apologize. I was having just a little bit of audio issue there for your presentation and uh, apologies if you covered this, but what is the difference between when you hear the term go bag or, and a stay bag? What, what is the difference there uh, between those two things? Thanks, Assemblymember Mullen. It's the difference between having to evacuate quickly. Um, you want that go bag. Uh, so in my family, we all have our own go bags and they are near the front door. Um, that way, if we know we have to leave immediately, um, there's, there's the chance that you have time in an evacuation. So we always try to get people to prepare for three different options for that. Um, you might get the immediate knock on the door or the alert that says you have to leave and you have to leave now. Um, or you may have a few minutes or you might have a few hours. It just depends on the incident, um, the type of incident. So having that go bag readily available with all of your items in it, um, really essential. The stay box is for shelter in place. So it might be, you know, we've all been, you know, subject to the COVID and basically sheltering at home. Um, so really that stay box, if you're unable to leave for whatever reason, um, different types of hazards, maybe, um, you know, plumes. We've dealt with the air quality recently with the smokes from the wildfires. So, you know, having those essential items that you would need um, in that stay at home box um, is also essential. Good question. Excellent. Uh, thank you, Dina. And a quick question for Kevin Rose. And you were really pushing SMC alerts, and I've signed up for that uh, on my on my mobile phone. But what are the the various kinds of emergencies that are covered by the SMC alert? Um, I, you know, obviously an earthquake. Uh, you know, the kinds of obvious ones. But uh, what other kinds of information? Are, are people going to be getting via the SMC alert? Sure, and I'll explain in two ways. One, the, the, the major catastrophic events that happen and then the typical day-to-day -day unfortunate events that occur. So for the subscribership, when you sign up and, and choose whatever cities you might be interested in, uh, it really pertains to on the fire side, uh, uh, fires, apartment fires that have broken out in a certain area and mostly uh, what is conveyed to the public is to stay out of a certain area, different streets to allow for the ingress and egress of uh, fire resources, as well as EMS resources in case there's um, potential injuries. Um, there's also on the law side, if there happens to be law activity, if there's a car crash um, within off of the state highway, CHP oversees that and conveys that type of information. But regular roads, uh, city roads, um, local PD will basically share with you areas to avoid, again, the ingress and egress of uh, first responder vehicles. So that's the type of messaging you get based on the types of cities that you uh, want to receive information from. Um, most importantly, of course, from the coast, even if they live on the coast, they really wanted to know what's going on with Highway 92 um, because that can cause backup for hours um, where alternate routes can get them um, home in a, in a safer and faster manner. Now for the catastrophic events, earthquake, fire, flood, tsunami, um, you name it, we, we are uh, the Disneyland of disasters in California. Um, all 139,000 subscribers um, would be notified of the catastrophic event that would impact them. So even though the CZU fire was a significant impact event. Only those that were within the coast side or the foothills surrounding area were notified about it. Again, more so the notification of the dangers that are there and also not necessarily to spread the information further for individuals that may just want to go and look. So that's, that's basically the difference of uh, the types of um, notifications that occur and the types of um, disasters that might uh, cause the notification. Excellent, Kevin. And then um, 
Buffy, I got a question text to me. If somebody has large animals like horses and goats, you talk about the evacuation to the cow palace. What, what is, what's the first call that somebody makes if they feel like they've got to uh, evacuate their, their large animals and have, have multiple large animals that they need to uh, move in the case of a, of a wildfire, for example? So what's the, what's the first thing that they would do? Yes, I mean, we would suggest as, as uh, the animal responders for San Mateo County to first contact Peninsula Humane Society because we work with other organizations that have the ability to you know, mass relocate large animals, exactly like what we did um, during the August fires, and also um, working with the Cow Palace or other places that might be able to house these animals. It might be a little bit closer than the Cow Palace outside of the, the danger zones, and also working directly with the county. So call us, um, call Peninsula Humane Society, and we can put you in touch with those that can assist you to remove your larger animals out of danger from any kind of a disaster. Excellent, thank you, Buffy. Thanks to all of our panelists for sharing their expertise tonight. There's a wealth of information on disaster preparedness. I hope folks watching found it useful. Again, you can find more information. You can see this uh, presentation recording on my website. If you Google Kevin Mullen, M-U-L-L-I-N, uh, it's the first link, it's my official website. And while today has been focused on preparing, disaster recovery is another uh, critical process. And I would uh, encourage you to look at organizations like the Red Cross, uh, like the California Conservation Corps, which uh, plays a critical role in hardening our resources infrastructure in the state and preparing uh, for events like wildfire, government agencies such as FEMA, and the Small Business uh, Administration for resources as well. So with that, I wanna thank our panelists for their great information. Thank all of, uh, the folks watching on Facebook and thank you for your participation and please enjoy the rest of your evening and stay safe and we'll see you next time. Thank you all very much.